So John Gruden's departure is still the talk of the town. It's bouncing all over the echo chamber of conversation. This story still got legs. And it is time now for what has become this week our obligatory John Gruden Mahler monologue. Now, some key developments in the last 24 hours or so since we last spoke, a little less than 24 hours. Electronic Arts, they're woke. Uh, They are removing John Gruden's name, so you allow your children to play Madden football. They will not be silly by the voice of John Gruden. Uh, They are removing Gruden's name from the NFL uh, mothership of of video games here, the Madden NFL 22. That franchise, the video game company, saying it will replace Gruden with a generic likeness. So I guess they're just going to find a generic avatar, and that will be the new John Gruden. Now, meanwhile... Uh, one person seemingly took the brunt of the anger, the vitriol, in this recent news cycle. And it, it's, it's not John Gruden, because Gruden's out of the picture right now. It's somebody else. And that would be Raiders owner Mark Davis, who has now been put on blast by the media covering the situation. Now, if you didn't see this, and, and maybe you missed it, so... Now, Mark Davis, at the event where they introduced the interim coach there, Mark Davis was in the building and was asked about John Gruden. And he had accepted Gruden's resignation, and Gruden was allowed to coach the game against the Bears, and people are upset by that. Some of the media banging the table. What's going on here? So Mark Davis asked about the Gruden situation and what he – Chose why he chose to do what he did, waiting until Monday. He said, quote, Mark Davis, I have no comment. Ask the NFL. They have all the answers, close quote. And that is what uh, Davis said when asked for more specific information. Now, the NFL talking heads are very upset by that. That comment, I have no comment. Ask the NFL. They have all the answers. Uh, So they've been chastising and lambasting Mark Davis for not speaking out. He is being ridiculed, and the the general belief is that he is a bad leader. He's a bad leader. Uh, He's got no resolve, no accountability, and he is the character from The Wizard of Oz, the cowardly lion, that that is Mark Davis. So let us discuss. Now, are people being a bit too hard on Mark Davis uh, comparing him to the cowardly lion and whatnot. So I, I'm nodding my head yes on this. So I've got the DNA raffle, Kitty Cat, and Chris Farley. And we'll tie all of these things together into a nice, neat little silver and black package like the Autumn Wind, which is a raider. So A, this, these stories attacking Mark Davis, you're, you've got to come up with a story. You've got to come up with an angle. You, you've pretty much already beaten everything around John Gruden down. So, But this is, the term for this is misplaced, misplaced rage. Uh, I understand the mob looking for blood. They want more blood. They're looking for someone else to attack. But uh, John Gruden, since he's not in the picture right now, he doesn't have to talk to the media. At some point, he will. We'll find out who his buddy-buddy is in the media, who he chooses to speak to, but not now. Now is not the time nor the place for that. So Mark Davis, who may be the spawn of Al Davis, but if you thought in the media that this is somehow a carbon copy, then you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. We already knew there's, there's a massive juxtaposition between... The father and the son. Al Davis, a self-made man. Guy, whether you like Al or not, he rolled up his sleeves on his white jumpsuit and he got to work. He created the mystique of the silver and black attack. Mark Davis, on the other hand, is what you would classify as a trust fund baby. He won the DNA raffle. The beneficiary of the patriarch, his father, And his labor of love. Now, listen, Mark didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. He just had the right blood. Uh, And and that's important in these things. And the blood, sweat, and tears, he he has not put that in to the Raiders. This was gifted. And it was gifted to you. When when that happens, you look at these things differently. If if you look at the, the sports franchises that have been passed down to the younger generation, it's one of those things 
that seems better in theory than in reality. It's most often agony as opposed to, to ecstasy. And you can go down the list. Here. I'll give you some examples, right? The sequel is not the same as the, uh, is, it's certainly not the equal to what was there before. For example, a George Steinbrenner, badass George Steinbrenner, owner of the Yankees, right? His, his passing years ago passed the team on to the children. How's that worked out? Eh, well, it certainly helped the Red Sox. The Red Sox have had a 20 year run of success, while the Yankees have had, I think they won once in 09 since, since the glory days of the 90s. Uh, Jim Ursay. We're going to talk more about him later with the Colts. How's that working out? Mike Brown, who took over the Bengals for the, the Pops there, the co founder, the original coach, Paul Brown. Puka Palooza would be that what that is. Now, part B of this, Mark Davis, who is a lot of things. Mark Davis is a goofball who happens to own an NFL team. And there's a, a, a saying that goes back many, many years that every dollar bill is not worth the same. Right? And this goes back to what we were talking about. Mark Davis, he's got old money. The Raiders are old money. Even though he inherited the team and all that, it's old money. It's, it's not new money. When Al Davis created the Raiders and, and, and helped build that up, that was new money. Now it's old money. And going back to ancient times, human beings act differently when they inherit their wealth as opposed to earn their wealth. Now, that being said, Mark Davis is a different breed of kitty cat. He's a different kitty cat. Uh, certainly not frivolous. What we know about Mark Davis, he drives a 1997 Dodge Caravan and occasionally a Mini Cooper. He gets a $5 bowl haircut. Looks terrible. He dines at P.F. Chang's Daily, and he loves Hooters. He lo- that's what he loves. I mean, what, what, he, uh, last I heard, he used a flip phone, a Nokia flip phone from... Almost 20 years ago. I don't know if that's still true or not. Uh, but those are the things we know about Mark Davis. So he inherited the team. He's not, even though he's a trust fund guy, because he didn't build the Raiders up, he just was given the Raiders. The, the media are like, well, we, we need to have something from Mark Davis. We need him to come out here and be a leader, not be a cowardly lion. Really? What led you to believe that Mark Davis was going to do that? Now, the last word here. So the kid who owns the Raiders, the spawn of Al, in the eyes of, of – apparently he's, he's on par with Tony Robbins or Dave Ramsey or, hell, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King uh, as a public speaker, unless he's not. And really, when you think of this from the Raiders' side and Mark Davis' side, the pros outweigh the cons in not talking. Right? you got, you got to weigh everything. And there's a great quote from Mark Twain that sums this up. It is better to keep your mouth closed and let people think – and write nasty things online that you are a fool than to uh, open up your mouth there and remove all doubt. And so am am I being mean here to Mark Davis? To me, he is not the most articulate human being. Uh, I would put him in the inarticulate category. He often suffers from foot and mouth disease the few times that he speaks. Uh, Watching him in the public sector, it is as enjoyable as uh, stepping on a rake. Uh, it's the same thing, and I'm, I'm, we can debate whether he's got good business acumen or not. Certainly the Raider franchise is worth a hell of a lot more now because of the state of Nevada handing over everything the, the Raiders could possibly want with the stadium and all that, just an amazing gift, as opposed to if the team had stayed in Oakland. Now, nevertheless, uh, Mark Davis actually said a lot while saying nothing. So let me explain what I mean by that. He said a lot by saying nothing. When he said, I have no comment, ask the NFL, they have all the answers, he was explaining to you that the NFL is the one that's calling the shots here, and I'm even though I own the team, and I'm part of a bigger mafioso outfit here. But Mark Davis also, he's a real-life version of the iconic, defining Chris Farley character. Tommy boy, right? He's Mark Davis is like the slow-witted, kind of clumsy guy. He went to college for a while. His father, Big Al Davis, owned the NFL team. And then Mark arrived back home there, and he finds out that he had a job with the Raiders. And then when 
you know, Al Davis passes away. He inherits the Raiders, and the team's going near bankrupt, right? In Oakland, they're having problems, and it you know, could go under. He's got to save the team there. And now, now they've got a different set of problems with John Gruden. And so Mark Davis, just like in the movie Tommy Boy, you have to go on the road. He brings his trusty right-hand man with him, and they, they have to help save the silver and black attack. And it's a, it's a tremendous comedy drama. Will Mark succeed at saving the company, or will the Raiders move to Sandusky, Ohio? Inquiring minds would like to know. But really, the, the situation with Mark Davis is pretty simple, as we've laid out here. He's not well-spoken, and he also, by, by saying no comment, he explained the comment. The comment is, hey, listen, this is not my decision. I pretty much saying if it was up to him by by his words, it sounded to me like he's saying, "Hey, I didn't want to do this, but the NFL you know, they twisted my arm and said you got to do it." And I I interpreted that the way I parsed those words is that what happened here is the NFL as we suspected on the Friday news dump when they put out that story to try to get the union to back up D. Marie Smith, and they used John Gruden. They thought that would be enough to get rid of Gruden as coach of the Raiders, but Mark Davis didn't play ball. And so then the NFL got together after they had their weekend off in the Hamptons, the ownership, the big shots at the commissioner's office. They then got together on a Monday morning and said, okay, all right, hit the, uh, hit the nuclear reactor. Let's go Chernobyl here. And they did, and then that Mark Davis had no choice. He had to get rid of John Gruden at that point over the old email.